Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are now watching the telecast coming to you from Prayer Temple of Love Cathedral, where I, your humble servant, St. Richard A. Smith, is a pastor and organizer. We invite you to be a part of our services. Call a friend, call a neighbor, call a relative, and call somebody and tell them to stay tuned to this telecast right here on this station. If you don't mind, I need... Luke, back up, Matthews 5, Matthews 5, and 14. I need Act 19, 11, and 12. I need First Thessalonians. 5 and 17 and Luke 18 and 1. Would you put those, post those for me, please? When, when she posts them, you'll see that each one of them is about prayer. Church Christian people have become very slack. And whatsoever in their prayer life. We don't pray like we used to pray. Something I want you to do before I get started with this is get me 13. 13, 13. I think you passed me up. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'll get back to it in a minute. I'm sorry. Just, just hold it right there. But what I want you to do, when you pray, from now on, I want you to eliminate asking God for anything that is material. Anything that is material. Your prayers ought to all be spiritual. Spirituality ought to be the main event in your praying. The word says, if there be any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray the prayer of faith and the sick among you shall be healed the devil tried to stop me this morning I came up here and the Lord gave me a revelation I went to family dollar they didn't have none farmer meal they didn't have none dollar tree they didn't have none dollar general they didn't have none and I said, Satan, you are a lie. I went to all of these places trying to find a little simple white handkerchief. Are y'all with me? Little, I even went to the two uh, uh, beauty supply store. They didn't have none. And all I needed was little simple white handkerchief. But my not being able to find them answered some very, very important questions in my life. That you can't always find what you want. So you have to use what you got. Did you hear me? You can't always find what you want. But you have to use what you got. God. You see, God has a way of taking whatever it is and bringing deliverance to his people. We look for Pacifics, directs, 
and tangible. In Act 19, verses 11 and verse 12, the Word of God says, If there are any sick among you, hello, let me back up, let me back up. That's James 15 and 14. I did say Matthew. And God worked special miracles. I'm at Act 19. Y'all have to bear with me. I'm, 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 I'm scripture happy today. <laughs> But I'm going to get it right before I leave here today. The Lord said, I'm going to get it right before I leave here today. Paul wrote these words in Act 19 and 11. He said, if there be any sick among you. Oh boy, I got it wrong again. And God worked special miracles. I'm there now. And God worked special miracles. Not just a miracle now. See, miracles are performed, uh, 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 Earl, miracles are performed daily. But, but, but for some reason or another, the people in Antioch and, and, and the roadsides where Paul was traveling, they needed a special miracle. There comes a time in our life when miracles just don't seem to work out for us. Some of us get, our lives get so messed up and so entangled with confusion and trouble that we need, uh, we need special help. So God worked special miracles by the hands of Paul so that from his body were taken handkerchiefs and apron and they were placed on the sick and evil and they were healed. Now y'all ready to criticize me and come up with all this old stuff about he up in there working some junk with some handkerchiefs and stuff. Some prayer cloth. Ain't nothing in no prayer cloth. You want to bet it ain't? If, 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 if there ain't nothing in no prayer cloth, then the Bible is a lie. And I found everything that's written in the Bible so far, thus far, to be true. And I believe in it, and I'm going to keep on living by it. And God worked special miracles by the hands of Paul so that from his body were taken a handkerchief. A little simple handkerchief, and they were placed on the sick. Get me Luke 18 and 1. Luke 18 and 1. Post it for me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he spake a parable unto them. To this end. That man ought to do what? Always And Always. what? And not what? Always. We have gotten too slack in our prayer life. Our prayer life today consists of begging. We ask God for everything from a Rolls Royce to a million dollar lottery. And never take the time out to thank him for the breath that we breathe in our mouth. That breath that comes in. We don't thank God for that. When God woke us up this morning, some of us got up complaining. I was in a restaurant a few years back, and I think I told this before, this little old lady, she went there every morning. It was a restaurant, it used to be on Six Mile, and Joseph Campo, right next to uh, the floors. There used to be a big floors there. We, ain't nothing left in Detroit now. There's all this stuff I'm talking about, it's gone. But anyway, the little restaurant sat on the corner and we would all, all the truck drivers would gather there and we'd have breakfast and this little lady would come in. She came and sit down and everybody knew her and somebody would go over and order her a biscuit and some jelly. And that's basically all she ever wanted to eat was some biscuit and some jelly. And when the waitress bought the biscuit and jelly, she would stop doing everything. Stop everybody in there. And said, Lord, I want to take this opportunity. This woman got a biscuit and some jelly in front of her. Lord, I want to take this opportunity to just bless you one more time for this biscuit and this jelly I got. And she was sincere in her praying. And some of you will sit down at the table and eat lobster tails, caviar, 
T-bone steaks and never say, Lord, I thank you. We have gotten slack in our prayer life. Rosetta, remember? Y'all too young, all the rest of y'all. Henry probably remember. You remember. On Sunday, after church service, Faye, you with me? Mama cooked on Saturday night. Uh-uh, you couldn't cook in her kitchen on no Sunday morning. You had to get ready for Sunday school and church. She'd cook on Saturday night, and when we come back home from church, she'd set the table. And everybody in the family would gather around the table. There were 12 of us, and we didn't have 12 chairs, so some of us had to sit on the stool on the floor. But we gathered around the table. And we had prayer before you touch one piece of food. We blessed that food. Twelve kids done killed two chickens off the yard. Did you hear me? I didn't say Kroger's. I said killed two off the yard. When it got round to feeding all twelve of us, there were four chicken legs or chicken feet left. And that's what mama would eat. When we were, when she was pregnant with us, she weighed 108 pounds, and immediately after that, she went back down to 98 pounds. Twelve of us. But we prayed, and guess what? We had a good life. Were none of us in jail? We didn't kill each other? Are you here? You didn't jump on my brother. If you did, you had to fight me too. Are, are y'all listening to me? We had a family. And that's what family... Families are supposed to... I'm not advocating you go out here and fight nobody. You got to pray about this thing. But I'm telling you, when we were kids growing up, we didn't fight one another like these kids do. You can't even sit down in the house and eat without fighting. And everybody in the house got a gun. In the little one. If you don't believe it, just to turn on your radio. Five-year-old shot a six-year-old. How? Why? Where did they get it from? Because we were slack in our prayer life. And when you become slack in your prayer life, you forget to maintain safety and goodness in the family. Prayer changes things. Get me 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. Post that for me. I ain't going to be up here long, y'all. But I'm going to lay hands on some people today. Somebody going to get healed up in here today. You got me 1 Thessalonians? What does it say? I wonder why God wanted us to pray without ceasing. Because he wanted us to be like Christ. Paul reminded us that we need to be like Christ. Most of Christ's adult life, even in his childhood, he spent time praying. There was not a day go by to where he didn't take some time out to get by himself and pray. And not only did he get by himself and pray, everybody that he saw along the road was looking for prayer from him. And one of the most important things about Paul's praying, about Christ's praying, he never took credit for any prayer or any healing that took place. He raised Lazarus from the dead, killed the sick, nobleman's son, huh? But he never took credit for any healing. You know what he would say when somebody was healed here? 
your faith have made you whole. Not me. I got the power to do anything I want to do. But I ain't about ready to heal you. This time you do something for yourself. So because you have come, the centurion went to him. He said, you know what? He says, I got a servant down there. I'm on my way. He said, I don't expect you to stop and go back down to my house and pray for my servant. But if you wave your hand, speak right now. If you just wave your hand, speak right now. My servant will be healed. And he said, greater faith have no man. This man believe in me. I don't even need to go to his house. He have enough confidence and enough faith to believe that right where I am, God is. Right where I am, God. And some of y'all, well, the pastor didn't go to the hospital. And my sister would have been all right if he'd have went to the hospital. I was there before you got there. And I didn't need to go because God was already there. Come on, somebody. And where God is, there ain't no room for nothing else. There wouldn't have been no room for me when I got down there crying and laying hands and going on. When I all had to do was announce in the name of Jesus. Some of us ain't said in the name of Jesus for 15 years. We in the name of everybody. We got some of everybody. Allah, Hula, Dela, and Bala. And some of us got nerve enough to talk about Jesus wasn't no savior. He wasn't nothing but another prophet. Well, I hope not. I hope well, he was more than just a prophet. Not only do I hope it, but I know it. You know why I know it? Because he has proven to me. I got proof in my daily life, in my daily walk. I got proof that he's more than just a prophet. Ain't there one of y'all in here never went up on Calvary talking about in this day you'll be with me in paradise. This man getting ready to die and he's saving folks on the cross. Praying to the Father. Then when he got down, before he left here, he did another powerful prayer. He told his disciples that I have to leave you now. I have to go. And they said, oh, Jesus, you're going to leave us alone down here by ourselves. He said, no, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to pray to the Father to send you another comforter that will keep you until I, uh-uh, until I do what? Until I come back. Now, if he had enough sense to know that he was going to Calvary, then he ought to be intelligent enough to know that he's coming back. And some of y'all still don't, but he all Jesus ain't coming. You better watch yourself. So we need to pray without ceasing. Put the telephone down. Stop gossiping and lying on the phone. You know, I've never seen lies get caught up and spread it so easily as among church folk. I'm not talking about saved folks. I said church folk. Church, church folk are some of the lyingest folks in the world. They will get up. They will get up and know they hurt. No, they hurt and tell me, I'm so grateful and thankful that the Lord done healed me. And hurting all of the time. They some of the line is for talking about, you know, I, I'm, I, I, I'm just like Paul. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm just like David. Uh, when he, I, oh, I'm so glad of David. I'm so proud of him when he wrote that 23rd Psalm. Talking about the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And ain't got a cup of shortening in the house. Much less flour to cook it with. Ain't got no shortening. Well, what? What is it if you out of shortening? You want something? Stop lying and talk about God is your shepherd. You shall not want. Now David was right. Because David's prayer was not like y'all's prayer. David was not praying for 
ham hocks and collard greens, T-bone steaks. He wasn't praying for that. He didn't consider these are the thing. These were necessities. But when he said, I shall not want, I shall not want for love because God is love. I shall not want for peace because God is peace. I shall not want for joy because he's the joy of my life. I shall not want for happiness because God will keep me happy as long as I allow myself to remain in his anointing. These are the things that I shall not want for. He even had enough nerve in that same 23rd Psalm down about the fourth verse said, yea, though I walk through the valley. Come on, somebody. Y'all been hanging around in the valley getting stumbling over everything, deaf and everything else. Amen. David said, yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why, Brother David? Because God is with me. God is with me. That's why I don't have to fear nothing. I'm so grateful and thankful to Dave. that we need and that we can have a wonderful, beautiful prayer life. There ain't nothing that God can't fix. We go through some things in life. Oh yeah, the moment that you say you love the Lord, you're going to suffer. You're going to go through something. See, the devil hears everything you say. Y'all think that Jesus is on it. The devil hears you too. You know why he hears you? Because he's a spirit too. And the moment you stand up talking about, I found the Lord and I ain't worried about the devil. And before you can get out of the house, somebody call you on the phone. What? Oh, girl, let me run down here right quick. I thought you wasn't worried about nothing. The devil made a lie to you before you can get out of church. Be careful what you say. And be careful what you ask God for because you might get it. You see, your prayer life ought to be divine. These other things that you ask God for, you might get something you don't want. Huh? You might get something you don't need. So when you pray, you need to pray in the Spirit. And let the Spirit communicate with God for you. So if you're going to let the Spirit communicate to God for you, all you got to do is moan a little bit. You see, when you moan, the devil don't know what you're moaning about. Only God knows. And he'll fix it for you. Whatever you're going through, it didn't come to stay. God will fix it for you. I heard the children sing a song one day. He knows just what to do. Whenever you pray, just let the Lord have his way because he will fix it for you. Ain't God all right? I stopped by just for a little while this morning to let you know uh, that it's prayer time in the United States. It's prayer time at Prayer Temple of Love. If this church stopped for a minute to pray, God will make everything all right. I know he will. Oh, yes, he will. He will. He will. He will. He will. He'll work it out for you. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Don't let the devil tell you that you can't make it because the devil is a liar. If you got God on your side, he'll take you through anything, anytime and anywhere. Wait on the Lord and God all right and God I want to, those of you that have the symptoms, notice I didn't say sickness either, have the symptoms of sickness, 
I want you to get in this aisle right here now. I want to lay hands on you. I'm asking God to heal you this day. Not tomorrow. I'm asking God to heal you right now. He's in on time, God. Yes, he is. He's in on time, God. Yes, he is. Well, he may not come when you want him, but he'll be there when you need him. He's in on time, God. Yes, he is. Two by two, two by two. On time, God, yes, he is. On time, God, yes, he is. May not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. He's an on time, God, yes, he is. He's an on time, God, yes, he is. On time, God, yes, he is. He may not may come not when you want him. him. He'll be yeah, there right on time. on time. He's an on, on time, time God. God. Yes, he is. On time, God. Yes, yes he, is. he is. On time, God. Yes, he, he is. is. May not come when you want him, but he'll be yeah, there right on time. time. God bless you. We hope you have enjoyed watching us today. We hope that we've been an inspiration to you and your family and friends. You may call us for prayer at area code 313-865-6156, telephone number, praise the Lord. We are located, again, as I said, at 12375 Woodward Avenue. Our service is each Sunday morning at 1130, praise the Lord. Bible study each Wednesday night at 630. We invite everyone to come out and be a part of all of our services right here. Remember, God loves you, Jesus loves you. And so do I. What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Vicki Winans, and you're watching Bell Global Network. My name is Mike Duggan, and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy, D. Hattie, watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, everybody. I'm telling you, everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. I'm Evelyn Turrentine, AG, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock of Preachers of Detroit, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times. And you are watching Bell Global Network.